والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to mercy to mankind صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم The Prophet's father was Abdullah who married Amina bint Wahab and soon after they got married Abdullah who was a merchant by profession left on a business trip and while his wife Amina was pregnant with our Prophet وسلم, he passed away and died and this pregnant woman talked about herself saying that I did not feel the burden and pains of having this baby because she didn't know at the time and she didn't know except that it was very light and very easy for her to bear this child. The Prophet وسلم, was born on a Monday and it was 570 or 571 AD. Now, the consensus is that he was born on Monday. But what was the particular month? Scholars have different opinions. Some of them say he was born on Rabi al Awwal, which is the third month in the lunar Islamic calendar. And they still differ about the date. Some of them say he was born on the 12th of Rabi al Awwal. Some say he was born on the 9th. And some say he was born in Muharram, the first month of uh, the Islamic calendar. calendar. And either way, as Muslims, we do not have any great value to the day that he was born in. Because he never told us to celebrate his birthday as many people do. And Muslims are not like Christians. Christians have their Christmas. They celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. May peace and blessing be upon him. Muslims do not have this because it's un-Islamic to celebrate the day of his birth, والسلام, Only, the only way you may celebrate his birth is to follow his sunnah. And how is that? The Prophet ﷺ was once asked about fasting Monday. Why do you fast Monday? The Prophet ﷺ's sunnah is to fast Monday and Thursdays. So in one uh, 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 case, he said that on Mondays and Thursdays, all the deeds are raised and presented to Allah Azza wa Jal. So I usually like my deeds to be presented while I'm fasting. It adds value. And in another case, uh, or in another incident, the Prophet when asked, why do you fast on Monday? He gave a justification. He said, this is a day that I was born in. I was born on a Monday. Mm-hmm. And this is a day that I was revealed to. So the first revelation took place on a Monday. So whoever wants to celebrate the birth of the Prophet, mm-hmm. he is instructed to fast the day of Monday, not to throw a party and to start singing and chanting like so many Muslims around the world do. This is an innovation by itself. It's a diversion 
from the sunnah, from the religion of actions and deeds and belief of Allah. It is not only merely the love of the Prophet ﷺ that will enter, will allow you to enter paradise as so many people think. No, it is not. If you love the Prophet ﷺ, this, this is good and great. But to add to this, you have to follow him. You have to pr practice the religion. But to just stay there, indulge yourself in sins as many Muslims do, and only celebrate one day during the whole year and claim that by celebrating the birth of the Prophet ﷺ, all of my sins would uh, be demolished and, and, and erased. This indeed is a misconception that has to be cleared to all Muslims. But it's, it's a custom of my of the people in my country to spread and give away sweets and desserts. Candies. Yeah. And candies. Of the and, and yeah, so on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Th th again, this is uh, 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 not permissible mm -hmm. because this is a form of celebrating the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu mm -hmm. And to be uh, objective, what is most important? His birthday or the day he was revealed f uh, to? The day. Yeah. The day he was revealed to. Revelation. Because when he was born, alayhi salatu wasalam, he was born like any other child. But when he was revealed to, the day he was commissioned, then this is the turning point to all humanity. Getting them out of darkness into light by his message. So, we unfortunately, there are sects and groups that would like to emphasize on his birthday rather than anything else. And they tranquilize people with uh, 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 whatever they say about him to divert them from actions, from deeds, from following his sunnah, from applying his sharia, from instructing people to abide by the Quran and sunnah. They give them, they sedate people with the stories of his birthday and with parties and so on and trying to convince people by if you celebrate then you're on the safe track you are in paradise and neglect anything else there is no jihad there is no need for pray for prayer in mosques there is no need to implement the sharia and the rule of allah and the rule of the quran because we believe in muhammad it's exactly like what the Christians say, if you believe in Jesus, then you are saved. He is your Savior. Once you believe in Him, then you will enter the kingdom of heaven, regardless of what you do. Even if you commit adultery, fornicate, uh, drink intoxicants, steal, kill, rob, do whatever you want. But just believe in the Savior. Uh, may peace and blessing be upon Him. Muslims nowadays are trying to, to go into this direction because it's much easier than praying. You know, walking uh, 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 to, to uh, wake up in the middle of the night just before the break of dawn and pray five times a day, fast the whole month of Ramadan. This is a lot. It's much easier for me just to throw a party for the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu and then it's a day, call it a day, and, and, and this is enough? No, it's not. So coming back to our subject, the Prophet ﷺ was born on a Monday. And but, Sheikh, before going on his birth, okay. uh, are there any, is there any prophecy or um, foretelling about any of those fortune tellers about the coming or the birth of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ? Or in the books of the previous okay. prophets also and I messengers? Heard, yeah, I heard some say that. Uh, Muhammad is the supplication of Abraham, of Abraham the, the prophecy of Moses, and the glad tidings of Jesus. What does this mean? Well, in order to answer this question, we have to go into details of the scriptures. As for uh, uh, the supplication or the prayer, the answer to the prayer of Abraham, this is mentioned in the Quran, where Abraham is asking Allah Azza wa Jal, to send one of his <coughs> offsprings to all mankind to guide them and to uh, uh, show them the right path. This is understood. Yes. Moses, as in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ, as in the New Testament, also mentioned this, but I did not bring the actual quote from uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament, where Moses 
it is said that Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Old Testament that He will send a man from the brethren of the sons of Israel. And the, the, uh, the, the, the brethren of the sons of Israel are the sons of Ishmael. Yes. Because they are the two uh, uh, divisions of uh, Abraham. And he said that I will, uh, Allah says in the Old Testament, so claimed to be, uh, I will put my words into his mouth and he will not say anything except those that I tell him to. And if you look at it, the brethren of the sons of Israel are those uh, uh, of the offsprings of Ishmael. The only similar one to Moses is the Prophet ﷺ, because Jesus did not have a father. Mm -hmm. Moses had a father. Yeah. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ had a father. Muhammad and Moses all died. Jesus did not die. And of course this is the, 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 the belief of Muslims that Jesus Christ is not dead. He was resurrected, alive, and he is in heaven awaiting for the permission from Allah Azza wa to descend back again to kill the Antichrist and to rule with the Sharia, with the religion of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, uh, uh, if you look at this verse from the Bible, you will find that Muhammad Alaihi Wasallam never talks of his own. All what he says are the words of Allah the Almighty and this is the Holy Quran that has been preserved for the past 15 centuries without anyone claiming to uh, 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 alter or change anything in it. Jesus Christ, may peace and blessing be upon him and exalt his mentioning, also said that and I, I, I'm, I'm saying the meaning, I, don't, I did not get the quotation. He said that it's better for you that I leave, because if I do not leave, I will not send you the comforter. And this is the translation into English, the comforter. And if you look at the word Muhammad or Ahmad, and they're all names of the Prophet ﷺ, it comes from being the praised one. Praised one yeah. And the one that gives you the praisals. So, he is a comforter, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His teachings are comforting to the followers of him. And this is, again, the prophecy of uh, uh, Jesus Christ. And it's also, or the glad tidings of Jesus Christ and the prophecy of Moses and the supplication and prayer of Abraham. May peace and blessing be uh, uh, upon them all. This is is regarding all scriptures. Now, there are things that the books of Sirah claim to have uh, uh, preceded his birth, such as the uh, demolishing of some of the uh, 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 balconies in, in, in Persia and uh, the light uh, or the fire that uh, the people in Persia worshipped uh, uh, was put off and so on. But all of this are, are not authentic, so we do not claim it to have happened. Uh, we have a short break and inshallah we'll continue just after the break. If you're 18 or if you're 80, if you've been Muslim for 50 years or five minutes, this is a show for you. You know when five times a day I've, our foreheads touch the ground in prayer, we beg for what's most important in our lives. We want to be good people, better Muslims. We want to serve Allah Almighty with all our hearts. In this show, Let's Talk, every week we're going to talk about Islam and life, how to relate with other people and how to serve Allah. We'll have studio guests. We'll have a live studio audience. There'll be an email for you to write to, talk at huda.tv. So if you're looking for something different, looking for something that will make you think, maybe even touch your heart. This is the show for you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. Again, 
the Prophet ﷺ was born on a Monday morning. And the minute he was born, Thwaybiyah or Thwaybah, who was the uh, maid of Abu Lahab, took the glad tidings and went to Abdul Muttalib telling him that he has a grandson. Abdul Muttalib was very happy to hear this because he loved Abdullah, his son who passed away. And he felt so kind to this uh, orphan, his grandson, that he was so happy with him. He took the child, he went into the Kaaba, and he named him Muhammad, which was a very uh, strange name at that time. It was not uh, quite popular. And he chose that because he thought that Muhammad وسلم, would have a very bright future and he would be uh, someone with uh, heavy weight in his society. And I think he said he said that woman free and who, who brought him that glad tidings. Well, he did, that. he did not. It was said that Abu Lahab, who was the owner of Thuwayda, once she told him that he was born, he was so happy that he set her free. There are few hadiths, though Abu Lahab is the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu yet he was his strongest enemy, an attacker in everywhere he goes. But because he was happy uh, when he heard the, 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 the news, it, it was reported that Allah Azza wa Jal has uh, made it little punishment every Monday on him because he set the maid free because she brought him the glad tidings. But this is not authentic. So we should not build a lot of uh, hopes on that. Abdul Muttalib, on the seventh day of the birth of Muhammad wasalam, circumcised him. And there are reports, but again not authentic, that he was born circumcised. But these are not uh, uh, authentic hadiths. It is custom, it is the sunnah, the tradition of Islam that any male born uh, uh, child is to be circumcised on his seventh day after birth. So he did that and he gave him the good name of uh, uh, Muhammad. Now the first one to breastfeed the Prophet ﷺ was dismayed Thuwaybah. And Thuwaybah also breastfed his uncle Hamza before him and also his companion Abu Salama before him. So these three men, great men of Islam, are all brothers by or through breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And this is one form of brotherhood other than having a paternal father that, that gives uh, that he's a, a brother of your father and mother fostering, yes. yes you have also brotherhood through breast feeding after a while it is oh it was the custom of Arabs to send their children their infants for breast feeding in the countryside because they thought that or the custom was, the idea was that breastfeeding children at the countryside makes their bodies healthier and stronger. and stronger. And also it gives them fluency in the language, in Arabic. Mm -hmm. Because the people at the countryside speak proper Arabic. Not like the people in the city where you have non-Arabs coming in or different dialects and languages mixing with your own. You mean eloquence? In? Eloquence in speaking is... Uh, I didn't understand that. Eloquence or uh, being uh, um, strong in, uh, in... In their language? Yes, yes. in yes. dialect. Yes. Uh, well, the dialect is different because they had different dialects in Mecca itself. But once they sent their infants and, and, and children to the countryside, to the Badia, to, to the nomads, they had only Arabic and pure, clear Arabic with all the poetry, with all uh, 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 the nice
prose and, 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 and verses to learn from. So, this was the custom. Now, we are told a story by Halima al Sadiya, and she is the uh, uh, mother that breastfed the Prophet. ﷺ. She tells us about herself of being in a very uh, uh, dry year. And they're all Bedouins, you know, they, they rely on their sheep and uh, where they uh, uh, um, travel. So she is talking about herself that it was the time to go to Mecca to seek children so that the, we would breastfeed them. And on that year, it was a dry year. I went on my donkey and my donkey barely uh, walked because it was so thin and, and weak. And we had a small camel, and that camel was dry. It could not produce any milk no. because it didn't eat anything. And I had a child of my own, an infant who was breastfeeding, and this child kept on crying days and nights because there's no milk in my breast to feed. So we went to Mecca, me and my girlfriends who were also seeking children to breastfeed and they used to go to Mecca because it was a, a wealthy city mm -hmm. and they were seeking the money that they would get from the father of the children they breastfeed and they you, you, you would benefit from that she said throughout the way I was the last in the caravan and everyone was shouting at me come on come on don't delay us and my donkey would not move and we did not have anything to eat and my child would cry day and night until we reached Mecca okay. we could not sleep that night because of the cry of my child and everyone from my girlfriends got a baby to breastfeed except me and the only one that was left was Muhammad yes, and whenever the mother Amina took Muhammad to one of the girls of, or the women to breastfeed they would refuse the minute they knew that he was orphan, an orphan, orphan yeah. because they were seeking money. Money. money and if he's an orphan who will pay his mother his grandfather so they did not uh, accept him Harima says that she kept on looking but no one was left so she hated going back with her girl, uh, girlfriends, with her friends, without uh, empty-handed. So she went to Amina and accepted taking Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who was days old or, 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 or months old. And she says that the minute I took him, wonders started to happen. I took him back to my tent, and the minute. I put him in my lap, my breasts were filled with milk. Him and my own child started eating and drinking and breastfeeding until they were full and they slept like babies, as they are babies. On the way back to their uh, 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 camp, to their homeland at the countryside, the donkey was the fastest of all. And the people were complaining, Halima, what is this? When we came, it was at the end of the caravan, now you, you're yeah, racing us? Come on, take it easy on, on that camel, on that, on that donkey. And she could not stop him. The, the, the donkey was so healthy, was so fast. All of this with What's the blessing that? of Allah Azza wa Jal through the Prophet Wasallam. And the camel that was skinny started producing milk like... Nothing. It, 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 it was so strange. They haven't seen anything like this. And they started to eat from that milk. And that was their only source of, of food. And spreading it to the others. And everybody was astonished. The father, or, or that is the husband, and he was called Abu Kapsha, the husband of Halima, he's the one who encouraged her to take that orphan. Mm -hmm. He told her, take that orphan. Don't go empty-handed. You never know what Allah Azza wa might bring. Yes. And when he saw this, he told Halima, Oh Halima, remember my words? 
I think that we have taken a blessed spirit. We have taken with us a blessed soul. And indeed it was. Once they got back to their camp, their sheep, whenever the shepherd would take the sheep, it would come as fat and full as possible. And the others in that community used to tell their shepherds, go and follow the shepherd of Halima. Yeah. Wherever he goes, by Allah, we see her sheep are so healthy and fat and big. Come on, we have to do the same thing. And they never realized that it was the blessing of uh, Allah Azza wa Jal through our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam. So they had this uh, uh, blessing among them. She breastfed him for two years. And after the two years, she went back to Mecca with her child. And she sensed the blessing. So she did not want to let go. She didn't find it easy for her to just let go. So she kept on convincing her mother, his mother, Amina, that you don't want him to become sick. He's two years old. Mecca is filled with pollution. They didn't have any cars, of course. They didn't have any uh, airplanes. Another but kind of pollution. Yes, it's, it's a different type of pollution. Still, with all the fires, with all the buildings, it was not as pure or clean air as it was in uh, 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 the countryside, in, in the Bedouin, uh, uh, in the no man's uh, land. So, she convinced the mother, and the mother agreed that... Muhammad Sallallahu though he was her only child, though she loved him greatly, and, and it was they didn't have any phones or you know a, a means of communication so that she could see him. It was two full years, and she could not see or talk to her child, but she wanted all the best for him. Though she was caring and loving mother, but she wanted all the best for him. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went back with Halima to spend two or three mm. more years in uh, 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 the countryside or in the desert, if you wish, so that he would learn more and become a healthier person. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal, we will continue to talk about this when we meet next time. Until then, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm-hmm.